All right, Coach Goodale. Uh, wish we could be talking uh, in the tunnel in Minneapolis right now, but you know what? These are the cards we were dealt, my man, and, and we're gonna we're gonna take the cards we're dealt, and and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how we're gonna get through this, man. How we're gonna make it work, and how you're gonna get kids better. But where were you when you heard the announcement that they were gonna cancel you guys' tournament? Uh, we we were actually uh, we were in practice. We were in practice, and we kind of got word. I was in touch with Coach Hagan, believe it or not, seeing what what he was thinking, and he said it didn't look good. So we kind of told our guys it really doesn't look good, but stay positive. Let's see what happens. And then I had to go to another meeting. Coach Pollard was on a conference call with most of the administration from Rutgers athletic department. And Pat Hobbs told him there'll be an announcement at three o'clock Eastern time that, uh, all national tournaments were going to be canceled. So that's kind of how we figured it out. And then from there, we each took an individual. We had five guys going. So myself, Donnie, coach Leonardo, Pollard, kiss called each, uh, called one of the guys and just let them know. And then, you know, throughout the course of the night, we just let our guys, you know, called our guys and just kind of talked. So that's how it went down. Who were all your qualifiers, Coach Goodell? Uh, Nick Aguilar, 125-pounder. Uh, Sammy Alvarez, 33. Mikey Van Brill, 57. Uh, Billy Janzer, 184. And Jordan Pagano, 197. And then, so you guys, uh, you redshirted Nick this year, right? Yeah, he was on an Olympic redshirt. So, um, yeah, he was he was at the Big Ten tournament, obviously not wrestling, preparing for the trials. And uh, so that's all up in the air. Ashnold's preparing for the trials. Grass preparing for the trials. So we have a lot of guys kind of in that boat too. So that's kind of a wait and see now as well. But that's kind of our it's kind of our roster. When you look at um, this whole entire situation, Coach Goodell, uh, obviously we're all in the same boat. You guys are in the same yep. boat as Cal Poly. You're in the same boat as, you know, App State. I don't know. I could name any school. Minnesota, yep. you're all in the same boat. Um, you know, does misery love company? Do we at least have Do we at least have each other right now, man? I think so. You know, the wrestling community is like a cult and uh... – you know, we all kind of bond together. I'm sure coaches have been, I know I've been talking to other coaches, how they're handling it. First and foremost, how are their families and their loved ones and how they're dealing with it? Is anybody sick? So that's kind of what you turn to right away. I think we all kind of understand it was the right decision, right? Once you start losing pro sports and the NCAA basketball championships, you kind of knew where our fate lied. So uh, yeah, we kind of just bond together and we know it sucks for our guys and and especially those seniors. And listen, as coaches, we're all a fan of this sport. You know, we're a fan of, of what our guys and, and, and our competitors put into it. I feel for I feel for those seniors, you know, believe it or not, I feel for Iowa, right? Iowa has, has an opportunity here. I, I feel for Colin Moore and Pletcher, and I could go on and on, right, and all these seniors that have a chance to win national titles. And I, I feel for Jordan Bagano, who's a six-year senior. You don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to get another year? Are they not going to get another year? So you just think of they lost this opportunity to compete on the biggest stage. And, and you know, and I know anything can happen at this tournament. So maybe not, you're not a favorite going into the tournament, but you have an opportunity to be an all American and national champion. Crazy things happen there. So everybody has a shot and you, you feel for all the guys. In 2018, I think we saw for Rutgers, anything can happen at 133 pounds, didn't we? Yeah. No doubt, yeah. Right? So, I mean, yeah, what he, yeah. he pinned DeSanto. In the, what, or did he pin him or take him down in overtime? What was it? He took him down in overtime. He took him down in overtime. overtime. That's what it was. Yeah. And it was wild. It was yeah. wild. I was like, it's crazy. That, that's yeah. the stuff we love to see, though. And, and I don't think 133 pounds, I don't think anyone would wrestle your guy. Nobody wants to wrestle Alvarez at 133. Could you agree no, with that? No, yeah. He, I don't want to wrestle out. Yeah. He's a tough out. And he was, uh, we thought he was in a really, really good spot in uh you know, we obviously we were really high on what he was going to do in this tournament. He was fired up for the tournament. He had a pretty good Big Ten tournament, and he and he's close, and he's not quite there yet. But uh, you know, another week and a half, and he he's a student of the sport and loves the sport. And Sammy gets into those big time matchups, so we were excited where he was at on the bracket sheet, and uh, you know, thought he was going to do some pretty good things come the tournament. Bird's going to help There's me. There's a hammer. Bird's going to help yeah. me co-interview here right here, Coach. So. I love um, it. I don't know if he's really going to do much. He's ever looked there, sit there and look cute. But um, <laughs> I watched this match with Gross. Was that a Conto match? Yeah, it was a Wrestleback Semi. 
Yeah, so it's Kansi Semi. Yep. It was a barn burner. A barn burner. Yeah, and it was cool, too, because our, our fans really, really got into it. Uh, Sammy got extremely dangerous. Gross made some really good in-match adjustments. He really just stopped shooting, which uh, kind of was a, was a smart thing to do because Sammy won all the scrambles. Uh, but it was cool, man. You had the crowd. You had the rack crowd really into that bout. Uh, it was fun. It was exciting. And, it, and uh, you know, Sammy's right there. He knew he would be right there. Uh, so it, it was a pretty neat atmosphere. And good for him. Yeah, and, and, you know, and I just look at the momentum you guys had. You guys had some momentum. Obviously, if you look at last year, we know your program's got momentum. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, anybody who knows yeah. anything about Rutgers wrestling knows you guys got momentum. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of juice behind it right now. There's a lot of good things happening, and and it's cool because we we wrestled six freshmen this year in our starting lineup for the most for the most part. Three of them made the national tournament. These guys want to come to Rutgers now. They want to wrestle right away, uh, and it's because they're you know they're seeing the block R year in and year out on the big stage, and uh, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting. They're fired up, and uh, I think that's probably why we had all these guys go. You know, we had all these freshmen wanted to go right away. And, and the future's bright, so we'll try to continue. I mean, it was a tough year. There's no question about it, having those guys in the lineup. But they learned, they got better, and we're going to be better for it in the future. You look at what you, you know, like, we don't know what you got coming back next year. You don't know what you got coming back next year. You're saying you got a six-year guy. We're looking at some a bunch of potential seventh-year guys, although I'm seeing reports, yeah. different mixed reports. How would you feel about a sixth and a seventh year for some of these guys, Coach Goodale? I don't know, man. There's so many, there's so many logistics to it. I'm just thinking about how do you handle the scholarship money? How do you handle the waivers? Are you allowed to go over 9.9? Uh, I'm thinking about all those things. I'm thinking about the, the freshmen that redshirted that are waiting in the wings at a lot of programs. Okay. So-and-so graduated. Now it's my turn. Now I don't have a turn. So now the transfer be portal becomes crazy right it's like free agency now if i'm not going to be the guy i'm going to transfer and that's just not our program that's across the board so i think about those things as a negative but i think about the positive like guys who i mentioned earlier some of these seniors that have been so close that deserve an opportunity to wrestle in that tournament i think about them and want it for them and then i think the other side of it you know the administrative side of it the, the logistic side of it how hard that would be and uh so i don't know i don't know of course, I want our guys to get another year. That's me being selfish. Is it the right thing to do? Of course, I want them to have that opportunity. But I don't know how they're going to be able to do it from a logistics standpoint. Jersey got to have their state tournament. Obviously, one of the best state tournaments in the country. Yeah. Um, Ohio doesn't get to have theirs. They had this, I don't know, we had this crazy late start. Um, that affects recruiting for, for the Ohio kids. It probably affects recruiting for you. I know that guys like uh, um, Virginia Tech was sending guys to the tournament. Brewer, yep. Cody Brewer was coming. And then it turned yep. into a situation where he probably couldn't come now because it was only family. And then the tournament gets canceled. Out. Well, hold on. Postponed. They're still they're still hanging on like they're going to have it. But I know. I know. <laughs> but, you know you've, got, you've had Ohio guys on the team. You've got Ohio guys coming. Yep. Um, you know, and, and I think that's validation for you. When, when a tournament like that gets canceled, that affects recruiting for you. Is there any doubt in your mind? Yeah, there's no question about it. That's a, that's a major tournament for our program to, to go and recruit. It's the one tournament that falls on the, you know, the weekend between the Big Tens and the national tournament. I look forward to going out there when I can every single time. Uh, and it's great wrestling. It's great wrestling, right? It's one of the best state tournaments. It's hard as heck to follow with the three divisions. Hey, but, hey don't get me know, started. You, don't get me I started. Know, I know. You triggered me. <laughs> Come on. Kills me too, you man. Get, you, you get right down to it, man. There's some of the best wrestling in the country, obviously. And, and nowadays you're fortunate enough you're able to see these guys on a national level. And I think that's why the Ironman, the Ironman is so important to us as well to be out there in Ohio. So uh, obviously it's one of the best wrestling states in the country. We'll continue to recruit it. I feel bad for those guys. You know, I feel bad for the guy we have coming to coming to Rutgers, you know, had an opportunity to win a state title and I thought he was going to do it and wasn't able to. So I think about that stuff quite a bit. Uh, dead period. You know, I'm talking to every, all these other coaches. Nobody mm -hmm. knows what to do with themselves right now. John Hanji doesn't know what to do with himself right now. Yeah. Uh, Nick Badleon, all these guys I talked to, Andersy, Greenlee, uh, Josh Moore, nobody knows what to do with themselves right now. Um, I, Tervell is literally the only guy I know that knows what to do with himself right now because he was at Pan Am's. 
Coach and Desi. Yeah. So that was the only guy I've, I've talked to who wasn't losing his mind yet. What are you doing with, to fill this time right now? How is this dead period going to affect not just you but everybody else? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's only been a week, right? So I'm kind of trying, I'm trying to enjoy it, spending a whole heck of a lot of family time right now, spending a lot of time reading. Uh, I'm doing some things I haven't done before because there's not much I can do from a recruiting standpoint. You're, you're still able to call guys and text guys, but you're dying to get them to campus. You're dying to get them to campus because you know, that could be, there's still some seniors out there that don't have a home and, uh, I'm dying them to get into that new facility so they're able to watch, you know, see it and look at it. And because I think for us, that could be the difference. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a tough time right now not being able to get these guys up the next couple of weeks. And you don't have the national turn, the, you know, the NHCSA. You don't have that tournament. High school nationals is a big recruiting ground. So, uh, yeah, it, it's hard. But I'm spending, you know, I'm getting some good time with my family right now. I got a, a son who's in high school who's training for a senior year. Uh, and I got a wife who's a school teacher. She's doing everything online, a guidance counselor, actually. So we're just spending a lot of family time. And, and then with that, you get a lot of, you know, you, you start, you, you kind of get ahead of the curve and start looking at your own program, strengths and weaknesses, how you make yourself better. You're watching film and kind of putting together a game plan and getting together with your staff, you know, on the phone like we're doing now, all of us, and coming up with a game plan, how we could get better. So it really never ends. Uh, but I, I am trying to spend some time with the family right now. For me, it's really, really important just to sit back and relax a little bit. But there's still an arms race to get these seniors, and that's kind of where we're at. And April 15th, we'll be able to do it. Uh, Zach Goodell, right? Yep. Star wide out, My Zach son. Goodell. Correct. I don't know if he's a star. He's pretty good. He's but a pretty they're good recruiting him in D1. Player. He's getting recruited in D1 and, like, uh, some of the, like, what what was 1AA. What do they call 1AA now? I forget. FCS, right? the follow, FCS, football college yep. subdivision, yep. right? Yep. So he's yep. getting recruited by FCS, uh-huh. and I think I saw is Rutgers recruiting him. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Rutgers is recruiting him. So oh. uh, I think they probably know he can go there for free. So uh, <laughs> they want, but no, he's a good player, and he's got a great relationship with with Cochiano and and uh, Nunzio, who was the interim head coach for a while there, and Coach Panago. So. Those guys have been really, really good to Zach, and uh, I think that's kind of where he would love to be, but we just got to figure out what best fits for him. So, yeah, I'm on the other side of this whole recruiting thing, and he's got some really, really good options, and he's into it and trains really, really hard. And, you know, this week has been a lot of training. You know, there's, you know, wake up, we're lifting weights. Wake up, we're going for runs. For me, I'm doing a little bit more sauna. And so uh, it's been good. It's been good to spend some time with him and, uh, you know, you're stuck in a house with them, so there's a lot of uh, button heads as well. So that's also pretty good. Montclair, Montclair State, I want to say, is one that I saw might have offered him, right? Was that one? No, no. They, they, they're they not even – they're not part of it. Who, was really it? Who been, are the uh, ones that have offered Monmouth. him? Monmouth. Monmouth. He's Monmouth. Yeah, he's been to Monmouth on a junior day. He's been okay. to Rutgers on a junior day. Delaware's been in. UPenn's been in. Villanova's been in. West he's Point's a UPenn guy? Ah. Uh, They've been in the school to see him. I, I don't. I don't know if he's an Ivy League type kid. <laughs> Could he get? Does he have the grades for Ivy League though? He's a good student. You know, he's not. He's, he's a good student. He's solid. He's solid. I love talking about it because normally all we're talking about is wrestling. Not good talk. And do you have any other yeah. kids, or is it just Zach? My daughter actually is on the dance team at at Rucker. She dances for the basketball program. Oh, okay. In the football program, so it kind of stinks. You know, who knows if she gets to gets an opportunity, maybe to get on the road if they make the national tournament, and that obviously got cut short. So she was in the thick of all those home games, and uh, it was exciting for Rutgers basketball. First time they were going to make the tournament, I believe, since 1991. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. And your daughter's on the so, dance team, huh? Yeah, she dances for him, so it's pretty cool. Okay, what is? So it's dead period till April 15th. And I was talking to Colin Moore. Correct. They're locked out of the facility at Ohio State. Yep. What is Same. Reese, what's Reese doing? What's Reese doing and what, what creative things can Reese even do? Can he go to Edge? What can they even do with the RTC guys? Yeah, they are. I'm sure they can do that. I think right now we're really, really in a holding pattern. We're not using our facility. I know Ashton worked out today in a wrestling room. Uh, so there, there's guys training. I think right now Reese is probably just hanging low. We'll, I would assume we pick it up, but there's no your, – your training, it kind of changes, right, because you're preparing for the trials, and you're two weeks out from the trials. Now that gets pushed back. So your training kind of slows a little bit. Uh, 
we were getting ready to really, really peak and then start to obviously taper. But that all changes now because we don't. So maybe right now they could use a little bit of a break. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at, you know, with Downey and Graf and Ashnall and Bryce and all those guys. A uh, little bit of a break. And then we just got to get a date. on. I think that's probably the most frustrating thing. We don't know when they're going to be able to wrestle. And uh, just speaking with Anthony, he just wants to know when so he could start the train in the right way again. So. That's just kind of where we're at, and we'll go from there. So I'm here in 2022 potentially for a makeup, a makeup date. I'm just telling you what I've heard. 2022 yeah. is a potential makeup for the Olympics, and you've got a lot of Olympic hopefuls, and you're going to keep drawing in. Um, your RTCs all continue to grow, and RTCs are contingent upon drawing younger, better recruits. Yep. Tell me yep. how your RTC actually works, because it's a split between you guys and Princeton, right? <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, you know, I think we take care of our athletes from a monetary standpoint. They take care of their athletes, but we all work together. So, uh, you know, basically we're getting, we have six, seven guys in, in the program. We're paying for three of them. So that obviously helps. And, and uh, yeah, it's two, it's two programs within 20 minutes of each other. And, and we're able to do some, some unique things. And, but for the most part, it's just getting a bunch of guys together who have these Olympic aspirations and, world team aspirations and they're all at a pretty high level. And I think Reese having the name he has is, you know, he's turned out to be a pretty darn good coach and he's had, he's had success with our guys with Pat, with Nate Jackson, um, with Tyler Graff and, and even Anthony was on the ladder. You know, he was on that top three, one of the top three guys. So it's worked out. Um, when Kolodzik was on an Olympic red shirt, he was in our room quite a bit. We've never shied away from like, for example, Anthony and Kolodzik wrestling all last summer, even though they were going to have to compete against each other in a duel and in a national semi, as it turns out. We never shied away from wrestling with those guys. They don't shy away from wrestling with us. Uh, so it's worked out. It's been a, it's been a good partnership. we got to continue to bring in the best guys. I think we're on some really, really good guys that are on the line right now that you know might want to come to Jersey and train, and I, hopefully that comes out sooner rather than later. Um, Again, a lot of it's about money, but I think we can. We're in we're in a good spot. The NGRTC now, from a fundraising standpoint, we can attract these guys. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing now. And at the end of the day, we want to put guys on. It was awesome having two guys on your world team. That was really really cool. Final X, although Pat didn't get to wrestle in Final X, it was really cool that he was going to be able to wrestle in the rack. And then going out to Lincoln and having Tyler Graff, you know, Rutgers wrestling, Princeton wrestling, we're always on. We're always in the thick of it because our guys who train with us are wrestling at these at these tournaments, these high level tournaments, trying to make world teams. So we want to keep doing that because we know we know what comes uh, when you're able to do that with certain individuals. Reese has done a great job. We're fortunate enough to have Donnie Pritzloff, who I think is one of the best coaches in the world. Uh, so we have a really really good training situation for sure. You know, um, Sean Bormat said you know about Cliff Keen Wrestling Club. Mm -hmm. He says it's like a whole nother full-time job for him. Yep. You're splitting that duties with another head coach and another coaching staff. So you're yeah. getting half of what Sean's having to do, but how much yep. fundraising is it for you? It's got to be so much fundraising. You know what? It's not a – I mean, yeah, it is. We, Our committee, before we started the NJRTC, not to make this a long, drawn-out story, we had a Scarlet Knight Wrestling Club. So there we had 12 to 15 guys on a committee, and their sole purpose – was to fundraise for us and, and put together these, whether it's a golf out and a fishing trip, a, a dinner, meet the coaches night, meet the athletes, whatever we were doing, we were raising money. So that never stopped. We just got Princeton on board with doing some of the things we were doing. And then our money really kind of started to double. Now we're still in charge of raising money. We still got to pay our director of wrestling operations, our recruiting coordinator, Kyle Kiss, uh, our volunteer coach, Tyler Graff. And we still got to pay those guys along with our athletes. So, Fundraising never, never really, really stops. I get where Sean's coming from. If we didn't have Reese, it's going to be Donnie Pritzloff. And now that becomes the NJRTC now becomes Donnie Pritzloff's baby along with Rutgers Wrestling. That's a hard thing to do. And that's what really attracted us to it. I don't know if we'll continue to go this route. Uh, I would like to think we will, but you never know, right? You never know with the economy, with the athletes who you have. So it, it, I can only imagine what Bormet's going through because it is. It's a full-time job. It's a hard thing to do. you got to manage a lot of different people. And at the end of the day, we're coaches. So we still want to have 
we still want to be a part of Anthony Ashnault's career. We still want to be a part of Tyler Grass' career. So even though I'm worried about Sammy Alvarez, yeah, deep down, I'm worried about Anthony Ashnault and those guys and how they're getting ready for the Pan Ams or whatever tournament they're going to. So I can imagine what he goes through that way, and we're fortunate enough where we have a bunch of different guys working together on it. So it's a good situation. It's also a situation where, you know, like a Sebastian Rivera – uh, he could come back to New Jersey and train for you guys because he yep. is a Jersey guy. First off, can yep. I just tell you that all my buddies from Jersey have the New Jersey thing on loop. I think Artie and Ramadani has the New Jersey. He's got that on loop, dude. That's his ringtone when anyone calls him, I think. I know. But, you know, you we think got, about a thing like that. Enough, and that's a guy who he's in the situation like all the Michigan guys. Yep. Where he's competing, he's not trying to get on the U.S. USA team, but he can make the Olympics yep. because he w- w- Puerto Rico, right? Is he Puerto Rico? Yep, Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah Puerto I mean, Rico. look at yep. it, right? Yep. So he's yep. in a better situation to be at the Olympic Games. Yeah. Where if you look at obviously um, Michich and uh, what yep. is it, one eighty four, one seventy four pounder, uh, Abinator, a- uh, Abinator uh, for uh, Lebanon, I mean, I mean. and then. Amin. Amin, Amin, right? Brothers. Amin, right? Yep, Malik, yep, yep. Malik, uh, yeah, yeah, the Amin brothers, but, but you know, obviously the, those two guys are qualified for the Olympics. Amin and yep. Michich, right? So Michich, that puts yep. you guys in a right. better situation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And, but and I don't know what that – I can't speak for that guy, but I'm just saying that's a possibility, sure. right? But you no, get what Jersey I'm saying. guys that wrestled, they wrestled their high school career here, and they go away to other schools, and there's a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of them. Who knows one day uh, – I, I, listen, Virginia Tech doesn't want to lose uh, their guy. It's 165, but he's a Jersey guy. If he ever wants to come back in, in an RTC role, Dave McFadden will graduate. If he ever wants to come back, there's an option here now, our RTC. Miles Martin, right? He's yeah. in a great yeah. training situation in your higher RTC. James so Green. Same with James Green. Yeah, James Green. I'm just saying. Loves, yeah. He, right? I mean. Lincoln and they decide to stay Lincoln. Yeah. But and, we, and we absolutely have an option for him now. And that's all we ever wanted to do is have an option. We have Ethan Ramos, uh, who's representing Puerto Rico as well, who's wrestled in the Pan Ams and, uh, you know, has, has done all that. So he's training with us. So, we have, yeah, we have a bunch of different guys right now. And it's a, it's a pretty good training atmosphere. And we're open for anybody, you know, as long as we can afford them. And that's the biggest thing, being able to afford them. Coach, you guys, you know, you're, you're split the RTC with Princeton. Um, how weird is that duel? How weird is that duel every year? It's so competitive, but is it weird? It's, I, you know what, man, I don't, we try to beat the heck out of them, but there's, there is a lot of respect. Uh, we try to beat them every single, they beat us this year. That was hard. They beat, they pulled, they stinking Kaladze gets pulled out of red shirt to beat Cornell, right? They beat Cornell for the first time in 60 years, but they pull him out of an Olympic red shirt and then they, he pins our guy to win the duel. So that was the difference. And, you know, I, I respect those guys because I see them train. I know how hard they train. I know how hard that staff has worked. Chris and I really came in together, I think, 13 years ago. And we kind of argue who was worse, you know, that, that first year. But, you know, I think both programs have come a long way. Uh, we want to win that duel. It's a trophy duel. We wrestle for a trophy. There's a lot of pride behind it. It's an extremely uh, exciting crowd. People are fired up for that match. Jersey's fired up for that match. Uh, but at the end of the day, we respect them. They do a great job. Uh, they were getting ready to have a banner year. I know they're all set up at 25, 57, 49, 97. Uh, so, yeah, I have a lot of respect for them. We want to win that match. Make no mistake about it. That's a big-time duel for us, and we're trying to win it every time. If there's a guy we can make an argument for, and I get the Pletcher, I get I get mm-hmm. Colin Moore, I get all, you know, Mark Paul, I get all those other guys. I get it, right? I get that this is horrible for those guys. But if there's one yeah. guy we can make the I'm argument sorry. for to give another year, would you agree it would probably be Kaladze? Yeah, I, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, he's, come on, he's a man. Three-time All-American, and he's right there. Yeah, and and, and and the the circumstance was February first. So, yeah. February first. Yeah, out February first, right? I, I think mean, he wrestled in an open tournament February first. I just mean, to get matches. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Like, come on, yeah. and that one, and you know, he's an Ohio guy, and yeah, and you know, I think he's a Jersey guy now, but he's an Ohio and you know, he guy. He takes classes. You know? He takes he takes summer classes at Rutgers. So uh, hey, I, you, you yeah. said it, not me. Yeah. You brought it up, not me. Um, <laughs> Coach, where do you, you know, I, I just got off the, uh, a call with uh, Joey Simcoe. He's the head coach at Tiffin University. They're an NCAA Division mm-hmm. II team. 
Um, Jim Anderson, he touched on it, and I just want to ask you, I don't think this affects you guys. You're in the Big Ten. You're a flagship university of the state of New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. You are what Ohio State is to Ohio. You are what Michigan and Michigan State are to Michigan, mm -hmm. Penn State to Pennsylvania. Rutgers is, you know, you are New Jersey. I don't think that this financially is going to kill you guys. But financially, how is this going to affect the playing field? How is this going to affect everyone? Is it actually going to affect you? I, I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it will. You know, and that's kind of that's kind of and not to upset people because once you say you don't want to see these guys get another year of eligibility, everyone starts thinking you're not signed, and that's not really the case. But we're fortunate enough; we're a fully funded program. We're fully funded. We get everything. It's a Big Ten university. Uh, yeah, I feel for the smaller schools. I think about my alma mater. I think about Lock Haven. I think about Clarion and Bloomsburg. You know, uh, all those the, the, the smaller schools that aren't fully funded yet, that still aren't fully funded. And I personally feel it's not a level playing field from the get go. Uh, so there's a lot of work that I think needs to be done there. But so that's kind of why uh, I'm not against it, but. If it doesn't work out, I can see where people are coming from. So I leave it at that. I don't want to get in too in-depth by it, but I worry about the smaller schools. I worry about if they'll be able to keep up. You know, if if everybody's allowed to get all their loaded guns back and you're allowed to go over 9-9 and some schools are now at 14 scholarships for a couple more years, is that even is that even fair to the smaller schools of the world? So that's kind of where my thought process went right away. And again, I would love to see my guys get another year. That's me being selfish. I would love to see some of the best seniors that I've ever wrestled in the NC2A to get another year. And I would love to see some of those guys that are chasing it out, like Matt Kalodzic and Colin Moore and, and Pletcher, you know. I want to see them wrestle. But at the end of the day, I want, what's, I want what's fair for, I guess it's 80 programs now. I want what's fair for all 80 programs. And, and that's all about college wrestling. And that's just where I'm at with it. Okay. I guess – and Dracy and, and, and Coach uh, Simcoe were talking about the devastation it does to the university and the entire athletic program. Enrollment. Yeah. You know, there's going to be people not going to be able to send their kids to school because of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, and, and your wife's in education. Is she public education? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yep. public so education. She's still working. When yep. I started still teaching. Yeah. I am too. But mm -hmm. um, when I started public education, Coach, I. Uh, I was done at 53. I started at 23. We were 30 and out. With 2008, yeah. 2009, that added six and a half more years so I can get yeah. to like a Roth IRA, 59 and a half age, yeah. right, to be able to live off that money. Well, what's this going to do to me now? It's going to push me to 65 probably. 65, right? yeah, probably. You know, yeah. you know, so if you look at this, is that financial – Is are you guys going to see a hit in enrollment? Are you guys going to see a hit – are you or 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 no be, no you're, you're not gonna right? University. We're the state university. Exactly. People are dying to get in there. It's yep. it's actually overcrowded. Yep. So uh, I mean, there's so many different things you can look at. I mean, heck, I think about these coaches that run wrestling camps. You know, I'll always be able to run a, a successful wrestling camp. I think because we're right in the heart of the state, in the state that loves wrestling. Uh, but but some of these coaches, you know, they 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 live off you know, having camps, they pay their, their assistants with their wrestling camps. This is all going to be affected. Even if you, I don't even know if you're going to be able to have camps come late June, yeah, early no, July. You're right. So, you know, I, I think about all that stuff and Rutgers will be fine. Cause it's a, it's a, like I said, a state university, it's a, it's a huge university. Um, and people are dying to get in there, but uh, yeah, the small schools are going to get hit with it. You're not going to be able to send your kids to school. So yeah, we'll, we'll see that you know, later on down the road, but I'm sure schools are going to get hurt by it. No question. All right, coach. I know you got stuff. Well, I don't know. I don't, do you have stuff to do? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You know what? I'll probably, I'll probably watch the rerun of the national tournament last year just to feel good about myself. So that's what I'll be doing all week. And, uh, we're going to, we're going to play a board game. Check this out. Do you see this board game? Oh, I know that. Huh? Yeah. I grew yeah. up doing that. So, I know that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> We'll compete. My son and my wife and I will compete. My daughter's not even home. She's down with her boyfriend in North Carolina. So we'll compete in this tonight a little bit, and we'll just sit back and, and enjoy each other's company and hope this thing gets better. Awesome, man. Um, I just got to I gotta say thank you so much. Last year after one of your guys won, I don't know, I think it was Anthony, 
you know, it was after Anthony won last year, you know, you talk, I was the first person you talked to out of the tunnel and the access yeah. you've always given me has been awesome, man. And I, I know when you were gum on the bottom of some people's shoe, I was still the guy who was talking to you. So I yeah. just, I appreciate you, man. And you're never, you've never been gum on the bottom of my shoe. So I appreciate it. Man. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You talked to me when nobody wanted to. So <laughs> I get it, man. You know, I and, appreciate and, and what it. Yeah. you did, what you and Kevin Dresser did and what Steve Martin did, how you guys were able to to no nobody does that at any other college level. No high school coaches jump to the college level. And look what all three of you have done with you know look yeah. what look what you've done with Rutgers, what he's done with Old Dominion, and what obviously what Dresser did with Tech. And now obviously he's setting it up to be the same way in Ames with yep. Iowa State. But what you guys have done is amazing, man. But thank you for the time. Um, you got anything else for me? We good? Nope, I appreciate it. You know that. Stay safe, man. Clean your hands. Clean your face. Don't rub your eyes. Just take care of that little one. Yeah, take I will. Take care of that little one and, and uh, just keep everybody safe. This thing will blow over soon. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to leave you. Stick on the line after this. I'm going to end the video with what I got to end the video with. You ready? Yep. Don't don't hang up, though. Just stay on, okay? You ready? Yep. New Jersey! <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, coach, thanks for the time. Stick around, you got all right? It, man.